Hey, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is January 20th, 2024. Before we get started, this video is for informational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned, know your time frame and risk tolerance. All right, uh, if you haven't done so, please like and subscribe on my YouTube channel and follow me on X at Alpha Charts 365. And I do run a subscriber group there as well. Um, give a ton of information to subscribers. Uh, I do um, a special stocks to watch video. It's my long version video, which is almost an hour long, usually 40 minutes to an hour. Um, I do a weekend focus list, watch list. I do uh, a weekend market note, midweek videos. I do a midweek market note, annotated chart setups for all of the focus list names daily market scans, uh, posts all week long, you know, seven days a week uh, to subscribers only. Uh, again, my feelings on the market and what's going on. Uh, we keep it real. We we, we tell the truth and, and we, you know, we're trading and, and hopefully, um, you know, everyone's, it's helping them in making some more money than they would normally make, right? So it's 10 bucks a month, affordable to everybody, less than one Chipotle meal a month, right? So, you know, if you think that this can help you, or if you just want to try it, like you never know, it'll cost you 10 bucks. I think it's worth a try. I think that if um, that if you get a ton out of it after one month, then you continue. And if you don't like it, you cancel, right? It's super easy like that. Uh, so 10 bucks a month, you get all that information. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, if you want to consider it, go to Alpha Charts 365 at, on the Twitter and click on the subscribe. Easy peasy. All right, let's get into the charts. Beautiful. I mean, this is a pattern everyone's been talking about for a very long time. And now we have broken out to all-time highs. There is nothing bearish about all-time highs, right? That is a very bullish situation to be in. You know, moving into... Here, we still have this widening pattern um, and making, you know, in the end, though, Higher lows and higher highs at this point, right? That's it. That's it. So it looks it looks good. Um, and not much more to say about that. You know, is it overdone? Is it extended? Um, that all may be true, but as of right now, it's a bullish look to it. It was up one point two one. The spiders was up one point two one for the week. Let's look at RSP. So wow, that's interesting, right? So RSP was down. 0.13. So uh, what are we seeing? That's a major divergence. Major divergence right there. Um, let's get rid of this arrow. And so, um, you know, the, the, the biggest names are leading the market. That's what all that means, right? Biggest names are leading. Uh, you know, you know, the names, we don't need to go over the mag seven and, and plus some more probably. Um, but RSP, though, so there's a divergence there. And we can see that it's kind of, in the end, though, on the weekly time frame, it's just showing a little flag. So not crazy bearish, but you definitely know who's leading the market, right? Um, and here's on the daily time frame. We always talk about this, you know, 155-ish, 153, you know, this purple area had a hold. Well, it did hold. That's the important thing. I, I think that, you know, a breakout here would be very, very bullish for the market. We'll see if it continues. Looking at the cues. Again, same sort of widening type pattern. You know, this, you know, 395 to 400, we said it was a part that had to hold. Uh, it sure as heck did and moved much, much higher. Again, very similar pattern to the SPY with that cup and handle look to it. It's just a big base. Uh, again, things are getting now extended, of course. Looking at the week. Up. 2.85%. Again, you see the beautiful pattern right there. 2.85%. Um, looking at the equal weighted, and those were up 1.83. So that tells you some information there too, right? What's leading? Obviously, technology names are going to be leading versus SPY, which is a little bit more broad based, right? Because we have the equal weighted up quite a bit as well, 1.83. Again, not quite as good as as the weighted pro uh, product, but so pretty darn good. Right here, um, has not made all-time highs, highs yet. I, I don't really care about that. You know, maybe 
we find sellers when it gets up here, you know, this $90 area, uh, but there's room to the upside. So everything looks absolutely fine. There's your cup and handle held what it had to. Um, again, things are looking bullish. Not much more to say. Are they extended? Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe not though. You know, it just broke out. Uh, let's look at mid caps, MDY right there. Here's MDY. So mid caps being an equal weighted product are back to this 500-ish level, right? Right there at 500, right at this purple boxy area. You know, this can start to, you know, break out and come back around, which there's nothing saying that it, it can't at this point. Um, that would be extremely bullish, especially making a higher high from here, you know, getting up to 515 or, or more. You know, on the week, let's look at the weekly uh, up. 0.46 again it's equal weighted product um so but has that flag just like rsp right it looks a lot like rsp right there and iwm also equal weighted product you know talked about potential falling wedge type look you know again flag type look and things started to rebound this week again so down on the week equal weighted product um but there's that falling wedge that I kind of drew in there. I, I don't know if I did it for everybody. If this was just for subscribers, it's possible. Yeah, I think I did just for subscribers. So, you know, again, another reason to be a subscriber, right? This is one of those extra bonus pieces. And we got long down here into the falling wedge and the support area and the 50-day. And we're looking for a move up into this, you know, back to 200 or so. Um Again, we're playing the TNA, which is the... Do I have it on here? No, I have it on TNA. We're playing the TNA, which is the 3X. Um, this was our note, which was the 3X IWM, right? Um, following word support right there. That's all the... That, that's it. So that was one of our setups last week. So getting long into here, this, um, you know, around 31, uh, uh, 3325. I think I got long, actually a little bit underneath that. Um, and hopefully we get to, you know, a nice little move higher, right? Looking for, you know, 20%. If I get 20% out of this move, I'd be real happy. And then we'll decide what we want to do with it, right? But we'll take targets where we have to. Anyway, I digress. Um, IWM is looking pretty good. Let's just get back into stocks to watch. IWM, uh, a little falling wedge action. Want to see to get above these moving averages, but overall looks really nice. Good volume on Friday as well. All right on the week, we said it was down a little bit, but um, again, good action. Going into the sectors, let's go and take a look at XLF. XLF came back, retested the breakout, and then big move higher on Friday. Again, everything looks very good, very bullish. We said as long as it didn't get below, you know, basically, you know, this 50-day moving average, I think everything was fine, and it didn't, and everything looks absolutely fine. Um, okay, SMH. E uh, this is the cap-weighted semiconductors. It led on this breakout. It's leading again. That is very, very bullish. On the week, it was up... 8.28%. Now that's a monster, monster move. So, you know, expect maybe a couple inside days or, or something to get that, you know, again, that, that verticalness of it. It's got to alleviate it somehow um, at some point, whether it's this week or not, you know, we, we don't know, but, but is it bullish? The, qu the question is, is it bullish? And the answer is absolutely. Right now, very, very bullish. Looking at, so on the week, it was up 8.28. Let's look at XSD, the equal weighted, and there you are. Um, and you see it's coming up to this very, very important area, uh, back above all its moving averages. Um, and again, looks really good. You know, it was up 3% on Friday, and on the week, up 5.15%. And you can see how this is just a beautiful, you know, just kind of hammering at this 225-ish, you know, 230-ish area. You know, this, that, that, this purple area. And if it breaks above it, 
you know, I think it go at least a 250 and semiconductors look really good. And I think that semiconductors leading is always going to be a great thing for the market. Uh, let's just, since we're in the weekly, we'll go straight to ITB and nice tight price action up 1% on the week. And you can see how home construction really, let's get rid of this arrow because I changed the way I do my volume a little bit on the bottom. Home construction looks really, really good. And it's really been in a tight range. It looks like it wants to break out again, right? Holding the $100 area, higher, significant higher low right there. It looks great. Uh, looking at XHB, my guess would be it looks exactly the same. There you are, XHB. Um, you know, it did drop from that little wedgy action right there. Held right where I need to. Again, a little choppier than than the pure home construction play ITB, but overall, again, doing everything right. So that looks good. Uh, looking at transports, this is the equal way of transports. Uh, it basically did a three leg down, undercut the two hundred, jumped back above it on the weekly. You see, it was still down, but. You know, like all the equal weights, it looks very, very similar. Uh, and then there's the buyers stepping in. Look at IYT. We have this trend line that it is still dealing with. Uh, IYT was actually up half a percent. Again, we're not, you know, we're not like, uh, you know, going, you know, to buy this. But but it, if it can get above this trend line, again, it is furthers the bullish case. Right. So everything we've seen so far from the indexes to the sectors says we're in a bullish scenario. Looking at the VIX, the VIX stays low. Let me get rid of these moving averages because I just don't like them. Um, VIX, higher highs, higher lows, but still if in the range of a bullish range. And we said it looks like, you know, when we look like back here, it looks similar enough. To maybe something like this, or something like this, or even something like this, right? Where you see some, you know, some spikes and some movement, but but nothing that says that we're not in a bullish range. That and we've been in one really since since June. Again, we try to avoid these times, and I think we did a pretty good job of it. And we want to be, you know, more aggressive during these times. And again, I think we did a pretty good job of it. Let's keep going to uh, credit spreads, right? So it's the bond market forecasting problems. And the answer is, get rid of that volume. The answer is no. They're tightening credit spreads. So there's nothing to be, con I mean, the, the bond market is not concerned about anything. I guess that's the right way. You know, again, this consolidation, I really thought that we were going to get expansion higher based on the last, all the other consolidations, but we didn't. That's the expectation breaker. It went lower. That's the information we needed to be more aggressive, period. So that looks really, really good. Let's talk about percent stocks above the 50-day. Um, you know, we had gotten overdone a little bit, and we get the pullback of, you know, again, equal weights are, you know, not doing great, is helping this situation. Um, but as you can see, you know, we're down to 61%, alleviated some of that pressure on the markets. That's a good thing. So that's that's a positive. Put call ratio. This is the equity only put call you saw right over here. We got that expansion into um very bearish territory on this on this um indicator. Uh again, which furthers the idea that we are entering a more bullish time as a contrarian indicator. All right. So DXY, you know, let's go back to these. Uh, it is flagging here and we may get one more push up into this 104-ish area, but I think overall things are looking, um, you know, if, if we do, it, it's going to, you know, make it a little harder on the equities. But again, we have to watch what is resisting and those are the names we want to be a part of, right? After that, maybe it rolls over, maybe it doesn't. We'll evaluate there, but this 104, one, you know, 104.1, 104.2, somewhere around there. Looks like it's going to be important. 
And looking at the T and X, which is the 10 year yield. Let's go back to a line chart because I think it's just easier to see. We're into a point of potential resistance. If this can roll over here, I think we're going to see a lot of strength in um, a lot of strength in the equal weighted and the smaller cap names. That's what it's been, at least in the past. All right. So summing it up. Things are looking good and bullish. Are they a little overdone? Maybe, but that's not really, that's not being bearish. That means you got to pick your spots and get good entries. And, and that's what we do every week on my subscriber group. So if you're interested, see how I did that? Right back to it. If you're interested, come on, join it. Give it a, give it a try for 10 bucks, right? That's the most you have to lose is 10 bucks. And if it works out good and you do like it, well, then it was 10 bucks worth a lot more than that, right? So give it a try at Alpha Charge 365. Hope you all are doing well. Take care.